This story is called Bloom, and it's a story of fashion designer Elsa Scaparelli. Words by Kyle McClear. Pictures by Julie Morstead. Every story starts somewhere. My story begins on September 10th, 1890, in a beautiful palazzo in the center of Roma. That's in Italy. Imagine a quiet room. Imagine a newborn baby looking up to her papa, frowning. Her mama, frowning. It's all wrong for me. Now I'm frowning. Disappointed that I'm not a boy, they have no name for me. They borrow a name from a nurse, Elsa. They say it like this, Elsa. One day I snuggled deep in my carriage. I'm alone, except for the flowers. All around they are waving and smiling. Hello, all I see is pink, bright, bold, shocking pink. The color swirls inside me. My home is dark and gray, but it doesn't matter because all around Roma, there's color and joy. My sister, Beatrice, is Mama's favorite. She is 10 years old. Bella, Mama says. I hate to have my picture taken. And me, Bruta. Visiting Roma's flower market one morning, I lose myself in a dazzling stream of colors, shapes, and smells. Ah, sweet canela, fragrant melon, a bouquet of fiori. Bold beauty, quiet beauty, hidden beauty. By the age of seven, I wonder, what makes something beautiful? Will I ever be as pretty as a peony, as confident as a daisy? A seed seller pins a flower to my dress. It is strange, but wonderful. He has given me an idea. I run home to see the family gardener. The next day I plant flower seeds in my ears, mouth, and nose. I have a face covered with flowers like a heavenly garden would indeed be a wonderful thing. I sit and wait, wait to bloom, wait to bloom. By nightfall, I am breathless and sick. It takes two doctors to remove the seeds. My plan flops, but a different kind of seed is planted. A seed of wild imagination. That summer, family travels to Milano to visit Uncle Giovanni. Uno, due, tre. My sister counts the seven moles on my left cheek. Giovanni is a famous astronomer, a dreamer. We spend hours together peering through his telescope at the stars. There are people on Mars just like us, he says. They are probably making polenta right now. Come on, mia cara, he says. Vogliamo, let's fly. I still feel bruta, but my uncle lifts me up, up, and tells me my moles are as beautiful as the Big Dipper. Back at home, with an umbrella in my hand, I leap out of a third floor window. I imagine soaring like da Vinci's flying machine before landing in the gardener's manure pile. Ideas are everywhere I look, among the books in my father's library, among the trunks of dresses and objects belonging to my mother in the attic. I am an explorer, a circus performer, and even the night sky, dress up, pretend, make believe, the world feels brighter. I am growing into an artist. But to be an artist, it takes money. At age 22, I take a job in England as a nanny. On a brief stop in Paris, a friend invites me to a ball. With a few francs, I go to a department store and presto, I design my first dress. It is held together with a few pins. No time to sew. I am a queen floating and sailing across the dance floor until the pins give way. The dress is a disaster, but my passion for dressmaking is sparked. Moving from city to city, Paris, London, and finally New York, seven years hurtle by. Nothing is permanent, but one thing remains constant. I keep making clothes. For myself, for my friends, for my new husband, we are together only briefly. For my darling baby daughter, Gogo, -Go. I draw my ideas on paper, making up my own rules along the way. It is 1921, and now I call myself Shiap. 
Can I do what I love and still provide for GoGo? -Go? To be an artist is to dream big and risk failure. GoGo -Go is two in 1922 when I decide to return to Paris. I am broke, nervous, excited, and ready to burst, but it's time to show the world my sketches. I start each morning filled with hope, braving rejection, stumbling home on tired legs. I want to give up, but I don't. I will not be beaten. In my heart, Uncle Giovanni is cheering me on. Our cold water apartment is dreary, but friendship lifts me. Through my pal Gaba Picabia, I fall in with a pack of artists. We must be outrageous, Salvador Dali. We are artists, not dressmakers. Let us take our freedom. Children are our teachers, Pablo Picasso. We must fail if we want to succeed, Alberto Giacometti. Like this, Picasso. We share our crazy dreams. One day I'm introduced to Mike, a knitting maestra. If I make a design, will you try to knit it, I ask? We will try, she says. We try and try. And I am more determined than ever until finally, senza in all, my big breakthrough, trompe l'oil. We have created the illusion of a bow knot. Women go wild for the modern design. At the late blooming age of 37, I opened my first shop. It is soon the beating heart of Paris. The new world is buzzing. Women don't want to just sit around looking pretty. They want to dream and do bold things. My unique clothes invite women to express their imaginations fully. A thread of doubt remains inside me. I know Mama, Papa, and Beatrice in Roma will never approve of the path I have taken. But I no longer feel bruta. For the first time, I see the beauty of my art reflected in the world. Boundless, unstoppable, my fingers itch to combine the strangest materials. Why not lace with leather, wool with cellophane, tree bark and velvet? A face of flowers may be impossible, but why not a shoe on my head, a coat with many drawers, a lobster dress? I say no to the expected. I say yes to my childhood dreams and the colors that once fed me, scarlet, mauve, periwinkle, green. And pink. My friend, the chemist, Jean Clement, helps me mix a new color for my next collection of dresses and hats. Jean adds more red. Not quite, I say. We mix again, two blue, and again, until perfection. The color flashed in front of my eyes, bright, impossible, impudent, becoming life-giving like the light and the birds and the fish in the world put together. Wild and explosive. I call it shocking pink. The fashion world spins with panic and delight. Not everything I make is a success, but through my work, a wondrous thing happens. I free myself from mama's harsh words and papa's judgment. I free myself to be daring, different, and whole. I plant a new seed of beauty. Beauty itself blooms to reveal the irregular, the imperfect, the smart, tough, goofy, surreal, and wild. The woman I inspire and the women who inspire me and the girl I was, who once felt so ugly that she planted seeds on her face. All of us together, we bloom and bloom. And in the back is a photograph. And a note from the author and illustrator. And that is bloom.